Good evening. Welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, January the 17th. We'll be singing from uh, Songs of Faith and Praise. We'll have several songs and a couple of prayers, and I will be delivering a lesson that I hope will uh, be edifying uh, to each of us and will give us each a pause for some serious thought. So if you would please, our first song tonight will be number 745. Seven forty five. Humble yourself in the sight of the law. Humble yourself in the sight of the law. And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. Now Jesus is the Son of God. 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 And he, and he, he died, died for us. And he, and he, he died, died for us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. 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 That saved a wretch like me. That saved a wretch like me. When we've been there ten thousand years. When we've been there ten thousand years. When we've been there ten thousand years. Bright shining as the sun, bright shining as the sun. So humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. So humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And He will lift you up. And He will lift you up. Number 303. Three oh three. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days. Pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. 202. 202. You're wondering why the music of this song is so beautiful and lovely. Uh, the music is by Ludwig van Beethoven, pretty famous guy. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of heaven, Lord above. Hearts unfold like flowers before the opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light. 
of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for a time that uh, we can uh, uh, gather about, howbeit uh, through this uh, medium of YouTube, and that we can sing praises to your name, that we can offer prayers and, and uh, get into your word and hopefully divine something from it that we can take with us and meditate upon and that uh, it will make us better for having worshiped you this evening. There are so many, dear Heavenly Father, on our prayer list, and uh, we just uh, uh, offer prayers for those folks. I pray that you, know, you would uh, have us look through our bulletin so that we can find out who they are and do our Christian duty of service and put them on our hearts and in our prayers. At this time, we uh, ask that you be with uh, Natalie as she is home from the hospital, uh, recovering from the covid I pray that you would be with Alan Crabb as he has come home from the hospital after a bout with double pneumonia. Pray that you would be with our friend Pat as she uh, deals with several different issues in her life. We offer these people in prayer to you, dear Heavenly Father, because you know uh, that uh, you are the God of comfort and we pray that your will in all things will be done. Be with us through this evening service uh, help us to draw closer to you. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And finally, our last song is number 67. 6 7. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love run from our birth, over and around us lies. Lord of all, do thee we raise. This our sacrifice of praise for the beauty of the hour of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all, do thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise for thy church that evermore lifteth holy hands above, offering upon 
sure her pure sacrifice of love. Lord of all to thee we praise this our sacrifice of praise. All right. Sorry for that little uh, phone interruption. Uh, we're going to uh, have a lesson now that I hope will be edifying and enlightening to each one of us. And so, uh, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, Jane and I, uh, for a couple of years now, have been uh, driving over into a uh, a part of New Jersey, about oh, 35, 40 or so miles from our home in Salem County. And we love to look for the birds of prey, uh, especially the eagles. Uh, it is just a treat for us to see them uh, at this time of the year. Uh, it's just about mating season, and so we're seeing them in pairs. Uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, sights. And then if we are fortunate enough to actually see them uh, take off and soar in the air, uh, that's, our, uh, that's our bonus. So uh, with that in mind, uh, my lesson uh, kind of uh, deals with that. In uh, Judges, the book of Judges, starting with the sixth chapter, we have uh, some, for those of you who have studied Judges, uh, you know that uh, this was before the time that uh, Israel had kings. And so uh, there was time when the, the Israelite people needed guidance. And specifically, if we look at Judges chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Then the sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Huh. And so the reason that judges were appointed to rule over the people for a period of time is because they did evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, in this particular case, in the first uh, verse of the sixth chapter of Judges, the uh, children of Israel were uh, being plagued by a group of people, some of their neighbors, from uh, uh, Midian. And so we like to call them the Midianites. The Midianites were devastating their land. And you know what? In, in frustration and in fear, if we go to the second verse of Judges chapter 6, it says, the power of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of Midian, the sons of Israel made for themselves the dens which were in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. Rather than jump up and fight against the Midianites, <laughs> they went into the caves and they went into the dens. God's people had lost their courage. They had lost their confidence. Verse 1 explains why. That they did evil in the sight of the Lord. And so with that, God allowed their uh, warring neighbors, the Midianites, to cause them all kinds of problems. And so, because of their unfaithfulness to their deliverer, instead of soaring like the eagles, they were hiding in the dens and hiding in the caves. Now, interestingly enough, the reason for their behavior was to their own discredit. What had happened to them they caused what happened to them uh, their actions and their behavior was the reason and God 
in his infinite wisdom, knew what needed to be done. So it was time for God to take charge. And he did. And he selected from them one man, one of the judges, one of the more famous of all the judges. You probably know who I'm getting at. This particular judge was the man Gideon. Now, if we read about Gideon, uh, Gideon was not the most resourceful and not the most powerful uh, of all men. However, being encouraged and empowered by God, Gideon got the job done. This humble man, made courageous by God's presence, led a small army of only 300 men defeat this huge company of Midianites. And so, whenever we think of Gideon, we think of this one man, um, powerful enough through God to lead his people. And I think God, to make sure that everybody knew that God was the one that was making the difference, instead of a huge army of thousands of people, he had Gideon do the job with just 300 men. So Gideon will remind us that God will empower us God will change us if we allow him to. Then, then you and I will be able to soar like eagles instead of hiding like cowards in the dens and the cages. Isn't it time for us to soar? Isn't it time for you and I to soar? So, far in your life, if you take an examination of your life, if you look, if you introspect, have you reached the highest level of your potential? Have you soared? Or are you so entrenched in your comfort zone? that your comfort zone has become your cave. Now, I know we use the term man cave, uh, but this isn't what I'm talking about. Have we allowed our comfort zone to keep us from doing God's will and actually soaring like those beautiful eagles that we see soar? And so, how far away from the caves are we as Christians? Those caves that tempt us to hide, we might say, well, it's comfortable in there. Nobody can get us in there. We can put a lookout at the edge of the cave. We can, we can hide. But to our detriment, what we hide ourselves from are the soaring possibilities. The soaring possibilities that we have in soaring for Jesus. In taking flight, in using our God-given abilities and our God-given talents to be of service to the Lord and to his kingdom. And so what I'd like to do for just a moment this evening is take a look at some of the things that might keep us from soaring. One, and I'm going to refer to all of these things that keep us from soaring as caves. One cave we are tempted to hide in is the discouragement we get from others. 
Ooh, that's a big mouthful, isn't it? Everyone is not going to cheer you on. Sometimes if you do good, people are going to be jealous of you. And so you can't always count on people for support. If you're too successful, they may criticize you. If you are a failure, they will uh, look at you and say, why don't you do better? And so one of the caves that we might hide in is the cave that is made up of the discouragement from others. When this kind of influence comes, how do we soar? How do we find the, the air to get under our wings to allow us to soar higher? Well, I would suggest that our relationship is with God and we're about doing God's business. And as long as we are serving the Lord and in serving the Lord, actually serving the others, Criticism shouldn't hurt us. It should be one of those sticks and stones things. As long as we know that we are doing the right thing, that we won't slink off into the cave that is the discouragement of others. Two, the second cave that we may be tempted to go back into is that of past serious disappointments. You know what? Our lives aren't 100% successful 100% of the time. There are things in your past that you are ashamed that you did. And rightfully so. Some of those things that you did may have been before you were a Christian. And sadly enough, some of those things that you did that you shouldn't have done happened after you took the Lord into your life. But we can't allow those things to be embedded in our subconscious mind. We can't say, I can't strike out to do something great for the Lord. I can't soar for the Lord because I'm afraid I might fail. And I'll, I'll go back to that, to that mistake or those mistakes that I made before. Embedded indeed. Know what I mean? Sometimes it's very, very hard to mount the courage to deal with things that happened in our past that hurt us in some way and even hurt people around us in some way. You know what? We need to soar through this. We need to say, despite what I did before, Jesus forgives me. I have repented. I have explained to God that I'm sorry for what I did. God, put the air under my wings. God, help me. Allow me to soar. We need to fully go into renewal stage. We need to take the risks. And yes, they are risks. And we need to literally rekindle our energies for the greatest cause of all. And that is God's cause. And so too, we cannot allow ourselves to be tempted to hide in our past and be afraid that we'll make some of those same mistakes. Third, a third cave we're willing to hide in, unfortunately, is when we settle for being average, or we settle for being less than what we can actually accomplish. You know, water flows downhill, it works that way all the time. And you know what? If we're not careful, life can drag us down and cause us to go down that hill. 
And after a while, we wear out and we say, goodness gracious, I'll just keep rolling down the hill until I finally stop. And if we do that, we won't ever stop. We'll keep rolling down in a, in a literal downward spiral. And it tends to fatigue us. And what do we do? We turn to the Lord. And we say, Lord, give us the inspiration I need. I want to be better than average. I want to be better than less. I want to be more. I want to do more for your kingdom here on earth. I want to be of more service. I don't want to just be average. I want to do what you want me to do in my life. And when we do that, then and only then can we have the soaring experience. God provides the air for that soaring experience. Finally, fourth, the fourth cave that we're tempted to hide in is our lack of confidence. Then the sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. When we lose confidence, it's usually because of something that we have done wrong. We don't lose confidence when we're doing the right thing. When we're doing the right thing and we're succeeding, we're ready to move on toward better things. We're ready to say, oh, I succeeded in this. I can succeed in the next step. However, we can slink into the cave of our lack of confidence if we're not careful. Now, the question might be, why do we lack confidence? Have we lost some of our faith? Has success escaped us? You know what? I told you in the beginning of this lesson, Gideon was just an average guy like you and I. Gideon didn't become special until he listened to God. And the more he got himself involved with God, the more God worked with him. The literally the bolder he got. Can you imagine that Gideon listened to God when probably in Gideon's mind said, look, if I enlist thousands of soldiers, I can certainly defeat the Midianites. And God says, you can do it with 300. And God emboldened him. And you know what? It caused Gideon to soar. The reason that eagles soar is because wind gets underneath their wings. Be selective and refresh your life with the confidence that you need. You know, uh, uh, about a month or so ago, we celebrated uh, December 7th, 1941 as uh Franklin Delano Roosevelt said it was a day that would live in infamy when the Japanese uh, planes attacked Pearl Harbor. Uh, we've been to Pearl Harbor visiting. It's a sad, sad place when you think about it. In not too very long, they destroyed eight battleships, six airfields, almost all the planes were there, and 2,400 human beings. Now, here's the interesting part. Some 50 minutes before the attack, radar had picked up this, these planes. They were 137 miles away from Pearl Harbor. Now, that's not very much time but it's enough time that the men could have prepared. It was adequate time to prepare. But the one in charge 
thought that the planes were coming from California. So he issued this statement. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what you see on the radar screen. They're friendly planes. How complacent we get at times. Sometimes we become fearful to where we will withdraw and where we will hide. And the more we withdraw, the more we go into the cave, the more we go into the den, the more doubt and the more defeat that will come into our life. Why not soar? Why not soar responsibly for the greatest of all reasons? Because God provides the air beneath our wings. He thinks that we're worth investing himself in to living our lives in winning for Jesus to really go forth and to soar. I'll finish the lesson this evening with a couple of scriptures from the book of Isaiah. And so if you have your Bibles and you want to follow along with me, it is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. Okay? Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. And Isaiah says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His, un his understanding is unsearchable. And then it says, he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he gives strength. He increases strength. Isaiah goes on to say, even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But here it goes. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The challenge is before us. The ball is in that court. The gauntlet has been laid down. God calls on us not to slink away in a cave, not to hide away for whatever reason we might, because of the discouragement of others, because of past serious wrongs, because we are willing to settle for average, because of lack of confidence, don't let those things draw us into a cave. Allow the Lord to supply the air underneath your wings so that we can mount up with the wings of eagles so that we can run and not be weary and walk and not be faint. I pray this evening as we meditate upon this lesson that when the question is asked of us, are you soaring or are you hiding? We can proudly say, with God's help, I'm soaring. Let's all pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we, we just thank you for the, the power that we get through you and the power that we get through your word and the forgiveness we get through the work of your Son on the cross. Pray that you would be with us this evening. And as we put our heads on the pillows this evening, that you will be on our mind, that you will be in our hearts. We pray that when we wake up tomorrow morning, that you will be on our mind and you will be in our hearts. And that tomorrow when we wake up, 
we'll think of the ways that we can soar for you. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, through this evening. Be with us and uh, give us the air, dear Heavenly Father, that we might soar for you. Forgive us when we err. Comfort us when we need comfort. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please stay safe and may God bless you all. As far as the east is from the west, as far as the worst is from the best, as far as the future is from the